We are now live. Hey, players, welcome to another live stream here on my channel. For those of you that are new here, my name is Josh. Every single week, I make videos sharing tips, ideas, and stories teaching you how to be your best self. And in this live stream, I'm gonna be sharing five signs your crush is wasting your time. These are mistakes that people tend to make when they're pursuing their crush that you just need to kind of learn from, recognize that they're happening, and be able to pull away before you get yourself friend zoned, before you get into a bad situation where your feelings get hurt or they destroy you, or before you end up getting used and taken advantage of by them. I wanna help prevent that from happening, so just being mindful of these situations is going to be the first steps to do that now um i do want to say guys that um if you guys have burning questions if there are questions on your mind things you want to ask um you can always use a super chat right here just click click the little dollar sign down there to donate a super chat i will stop what i'm doing top what i'm talking about and answer your questions before i get into the topic though i want to give shout outs to all the early birds here in the chat those are all the people that are in the chat watching right now so if you're someone that's watching jump into the comment box leave a comment and jump into the chat rather <laughs> Leave a comment and I'll give you your shout out. Let's see who we got in here. All right, cool. Hamish, Hamish is in here. Hamish is an OG, always in here all the time. Good to see you, Hamish. Haley is in here. Rage Master, Imani, Imani, always happy to have you in here. Happy to see you again. Uh, Rage Master, I said, Cheesy is in here. I want to destroy generic lifts. Mendy Levy, a pizza with a thousand subscribers. Andrew Dominguez, Yancey Kobian, Yancey, happy to have you, man. Uh, AJ Mack, uh, Jill Samsoon. Royal TLD, Stuart Douglas, good to have you, Stuart. Giselle Vega, Giselle, always a pleasure. The Movie Raider, The Pizza Man 20, Nate Saya, I believe. Azim the Dream, Azim, good to have you, man. Sam Leach, Jacob Topelski, Rubik's 300, Nigel Williams, Mario Martinez, uh, Vigard Rind, Sig Hansen, Donna the Gamer, Dono, thank you for the little Josh Hart. <laughs> uh, Alex Burns, uh, Leighton Tapley, uh, Aaron Rigoza, Coda Chapman, Stanley C, Depressed Much? Question mark. Yeah, so anyone else I haven't missed, if you guys haven't jumped in the chat, jump in the chat. I'll give you a quick shout out. Andrew, Matthew, Ryan, Lasan. Good to have all of you guys in here. I think this will be a super, super helpful live stream. I'm hoping you guys enjoy it and enjoy the points. Um, now, as I walk through them, I want to stop and do chat polls. So I want your feedback. This is going to be interactive live stream here. Guys, I think we're going to have a good time here. So um, let's just start going over things here. If you haven't already hit the thumbs up button on this live stream, it'll be super, super helpful. A few of you might be curious, like, what's this on my forehead? A mosquito bit me right on the forehead. Uh, so it just looks really weird. It's just an odd and bad place for a mosquito to bite you. So they did that. <laughs> but I want to start jumping into the very first point here. Uh, Hamish said, I can't donate. I'm broke. I get paid. Hamish, don't worry about donation, man. Be, you're a part of this community, man. I'm happy to have you. That, that's what matters most. Um, Joel Asindo says, what's up? What's up, Joel? So guys, so let me just start explaining, like giving some context here. When we, when I say five signs your crush is wasting your time, um, uh, over the last few videos that I've done, I've kind of talked about um, how to kind of keep pursuing someone when you run into a bit of roadblocks. They don't respond to you. They don't accept your friend request. They block you. These are all different types of roadblocks that can leave a person feeling like, okay, well, what do I do? I still like them. I want to keep pursuing them. And usually when I kind of give a technique or advice and say, hey, you can try doing this, you can try doing this, there's a lot of people that jump into the comments and respond with this kind of like, you're a simp, you're this, you're that, that's stupid. No, you give up. And there are points and moments where I think a person should give up and there are points where I think it's okay to keep pursuing them. It's not always so black and white. It really kind of comes down to the specific situation you're in. But the five points I wanna to cover today are things that I think when they do happen, it usually leads to someone being friend zoned, someone being taken advantage, or someone kind of just getting their heart broken. So I want to prevent that from happening, guys. I want you to just be aware of those different things. We're gonna jump into the first point here, just to kind of get the kick, kick that, just to kind of kickstart this conversation. Let's do that. The first point here is this: um, one sign that your crush is wasting your time, and it's a mistake that a lot of people make, is your crush. They barely notice. They barely acknowledge your existence. Now, look, this isn't to say, hey your crush is someone you've never talked to and therefore there's no reason for them to ever message you. But when I say they barely acknowledge your existence, what I'm really talking about is this, that the crush that you're pursuing never really responds to your messages. They kind of just never really are engaged in conversations when you try to start them. When you approach them in school, they just kind of walk away or don't talk to you. You know, this is a sign that I think a lot of people may see actively happening, but don't really want to do anything about or kind of scared to do something about it because 
If your crush is barely acknowledging your assistance, but they are acknowledging you just a little bit, you want to hold on to that, right? It's like in your mind, you're like, oh my God, they, they say hi to me in the mornings, but that's it. So there's a fear that if you try to do something more, you ask them out, you hit on them, you flirt with them, then they might pull away entirely. So people tend to get scared that they're going to lose the little connection that they have, the little bit that they have. So they'll just kind of stay in a routine of kind of getting that same thing from their crush over and over, even though it's not really moving forward. And I think that if your crush is barely acknowledging your existence, something should be done about that, right? This is a person that you like. It's a person that you want to pursue, a person you want to talk to and get to know. But if you're scared that, you know, like, if you try, then it's just not going to work. If you, if you try to ask them out, they're going to shoot you down and then that's it. Well, then why are you wasting your time? If you're not planning on pursuing them, if you're not planning on asking them out, why keep holding up this hope that, well, maybe things will change. Maybe, um, maybe they'll like me and they'll want to pursue me instead. It's like holding out for someone else to do something that you want is just a bad move. It's, 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 you're waiting for someone else to do something rather than you being active here. And I think it's incredibly important for you to be active. If you like someone, if you wanna to talk to them, if you wanna ask them out, it's like you have to take that initiative and take that step. But if they're barely acknowledging your existence, it might be a sign that you just, you're wasting your time, you need to move on. So I wanna jump in here um, and it's more of a chat question than a full on chat yes or no poll, but I really wanna hear what you guys have to say. I'll ask a question and then you guys, I want you guys to explain a bit of your story in here. I'd really love to hear what you guys have to say. Um, when it comes to your communication level with your crush, would you say it's pretty good, okay, not so good? What would you say the communication level is with them? Are they someone that you talk to every single day? Are they someone that if you message them, they rarely respond? Do they ignore your texts? What, did you, what would you, what would you kind of classify your communication level with your crush? Pretty good, good, not so good, whatever it may be. I want to hear what you guys have to say. I'm going to jump back in. Hey, Pokemon Mystery Dungeon, good to have you, man. I promise I'm going to send you over those links. Um, me and Pokemon Mystery Dungeon were talking about different things, and I promised him I'm going to send him some helpful links. Um, so I got you covered, man. Um, Pokemon Mystery Dungeon, by the way, is a... Uh, a champion level member uh, here on the channel. So every single month I meet with him, we talk about what's going on in his life, we come up with a game plan, we just kind of talk about what's happening. So if you're interested also in becoming a champion level member, all you gotta do is hit the little join button down below or go to patreon.com slash the Josh Speaks. You can learn more about how you could talk to me one-on-one -on -one every single month. And I think that if you're someone that wants direct advice, you want my direct attention, that's the best way to do it. Um, but I asked you guys here, I asked you guys the question, what would you say your communication level is with your crush? Here's what you guys had to say. Uh, let's see. Stanley says, it's been different for different crushes. That makes sense. That makes sense. Raymond says, it depends on the communication though. Um, Rage Master says, so, so. Coda says, no. So pretty much no communication, I think. Um, Nigel says, pretty, pretty, pretty good. <laughs> Uh, Lucas, Luca, Luca, not Lucas, Lucas, Luca says more dry than Adam Sandler's career. Didn't burn. Um, uh, Pokemon Mystery Dungeon says not, not, not applicable. I hear you on that. Uh, Op Decimal says at the end of the day, we talk a bit. Okay. That's pretty, it's pretty good. Scott says, I don't have a crush at the moment. Uh, but if they don't clearly seem interested to talk, I don't bother much. Yeah. And I think a lot of people, um, continue to keep holding out for their crush when there isn't communication there. So it's like, you may try to instill communication, you may try to get a conversation going, but if they're just not active, you know, perhaps it makes sense to just not prioritize them, to not focus on them so much, which I think a lot, it's hard for a lot of people to do, especially when you really, really like this crush, right? Like, it's very easy for me to say, oh, just get over them. And a lot of people say, just get over them. But that's not how emotions work. That's not how feelings work. That's not how thoughts work. It takes time to kind of um, move on from someone. You have to kind of recognize your own value, your own worth, and other people that can fill that role that that crush originally did. Um, let's see. Alex Burns says, not good. Um... Stuart says, don't currently have a crush, but my communication level with people I'm close with and people I want to get closer to is exceptional. That's pretty good. Uh, Judah says, I don't really talk to her in person and I don't have any way to contact her even, uh, even via social media. Yeah, if there's no way for you to contact your crush, then it's like that might be something you just really might want to shelf for now, right? Because there isn't much you can do about it currently. So the best thing for you to do is to focus on crushes and people that you can actively talk to now. 
Uh, Jill, Jill Samsoon says, I start the chat, she responds, but kind of late, losing hope, but overall the chat, when it starts, it's great. Yeah, sometimes when you start messaging someone at the beginning, it's like it picks up and it's good, and then it starts to taper off. And the reason why chats start, start to kind of taper off, especially after a day or two of talking, is that um, texting is fun, but it has its limitations where if it's not moving to another step and another stage, then that person's gonna start to get bored. Because it isn't just a matter of like finding interesting things to talk about and always having interesting things to talk about. It's about changing up the platform, right? If every single day you talk to the same person on the same platform, it's not gonna be exciting. And, and the message you send them is text messages, it's, it's not gonna be exciting. So you might wanna start changing things up by, instead of texting them, say, hey, let's jump in a quick video chat. Or, hey, jump on the phone, I, gotta, I wanna call you for a second. Or send them a voice memo and instead of a text message. Start by changing up the style of how you communicate with them. And then the second deeper piece really is start by changing up um, like how like how you meet up with them and how you talk to them. So you might wanna go from texting to talking in person, making plans to hang out in person. I think that's gonna get them more involved and make them feel way more active in wanting to talk to you. Um, just reading through some of the chat here. Um, Sam Leach says, hey Josh, I continuously fall for girls who I'm not compatible with. Uh, they always have vastly different values that I keep on crushing and thinking I could change them. Any tips? Sam, that's a really, really good point. That's actually gonna be one of the points I'm gonna bring up in, in a little bit, but uh, just to kind of answer that now and I'll talk about it a little bit more later, um, if you're falling for girls that you feel that you just don't click with, you guys don't have the same values, it's but you want to, I think um, one thing you need to recognize is that, you know, there's, uh, we can be attracted to someone, right? But that doesn't mean that we should always pursue them. Sometimes we feel like, oh, because I like this girl, I should try and see where it goes. But sometimes you're better off saving your time and your energy in pursuing people that you're attracted to, but you also see that you can build something with them, right? If it's just a girl that you think is, or a guy in this case, or whoever it may be that you think is just super hot, it's like, yeah, I think, um, you know, like you're, you're, your human nature side might be pulling you to like, oh, I just need to be near them. But I think it's important, more important to think about what is kind of the long term of what you want to build. Uh, is if you, are you looking for someone to be in a relationship with? Are you looking for someone to casually date? Are you looking for someone to just hook up with? And depending on where you kind of stand, that should kind of let you see, hey, where can I imagine, <clears throat> sorry, where can I imagine this person fulfilling one of those roles for me? You know, how can they be a part of my life in that way? Um, someone asked, is there any good crush songs? I think, um, Alex Burns says, Josh, there are any good songs to a crush? Um, well, there's a song called Crush by Tessa Violet, which is awesome. I would highly, highly recommend checking it out. Tessa Violet's like one of my favorite music artists. So definitely check out Crush by her. That's a really good crush song. Um, just reading through, Azim says, Josh, is sweet talking is sweet talking considered too obvious now because girls know you're just being nice to get what you want. Also, sweet talking goes away if girls reject you or the boyfriend excuse. So if you're sweet talking to a girl, basically you're flirting, you're flirting with them, right? You're you're saying things to try to like get on their good side. Whoa, that was loud. Um There we go. Okay. Um, Hamish donated two, two pounds. Hamish, thank you so much for the two pounds super chat. I'm going to put it up, pull it up right here. Um, Hamish says, Josh, I'm living in a caravan away from my parents. Oh no, Hamish, what happened? Uh, did you get into a fight with your parents? Is, are, is everything okay? Um, you know, shoot me a message and, and, and we'll talk. I, I, I hope, I hope everything is okay, but yeah, and I, that can be kind of tough. I'd imagine, you know, if you're not living at home now, um, then you can, your expenses are going to kind of go up and things like that. So it's got to be hard. Thank you for the two pound super chat. I know that you said you don't really have money. So I'd be conscious of if you're going to donate or not. Uh, but I would say just jump in the chat and talk here. Uh, Haley says Tessa Violet slaps. We stand, we stand Tessa Violet. Um, <laughs> yeah, but Hamish, um, I hope everything is okay. I, I know that that's pr probably a harder situation for you to deal with. So I definitely want to talk to you and see what's going on. Um, so definitely let me know. Okay. Uh, thank you again for the two pound super chat. Stanley says, how do I separate romantic interests, social life and school and extracurricular activities? That's a really good question, Stanley. I did a video not too long, not actually it was pretty long ago about how to balance friends and life and relationships and all these different things. Um, I think a big part of it is kind of, you have to kind of map out and prioritize a bit of your day, right? <clears throat> right? I drank all my water, guys. What am I going to do? Um, you have to kind of prioritize your day. You have to kind of tell yourself, hey, you know what? Um, 
I want to hang out with my friends, but I just don't have the time to because maybe I have to do schoolwork. Maybe I have to do extracurricular stuff. Maybe I have, um, maybe I have to hang out with my girlfriend or talk to my girlfriend on the phone. I want to do those things. So the way to balance things is to get comfortable with the idea of saying no to some things because you can't do everything. You won't have time for everything. And sometimes that's a hard thing to like, recognize and be aware of and acknowledge because we want to do everything. We don't want to miss out on anything. There's that fear of missing out that, oh my God, if I don't hang out with my friends, then I'm missing out on that. Or, oh, if I don't talk to my girlfriend, she's going to be upset with me. Or, oh, if I don't do my homework, I'm going to fail class. It's okay. Sometimes you have to kind of find the balance that works for you. And a big part is that learning how to say no, but definitely check the video where I go more in depth on that. Um, I'm going to answer one more question here and then I'm going to jump into the point number two here, guys. But like I said, if your crush is not really communicating with you, they're not really talking to you as much, you need to evaluate and ask yourself, um, what can I do in this situation to either move it forward or move away? Moving it forward means, hey, they're not very active, so let me try video chatting them. Let me try asking them to hang out in person. Let me try getting a group hangout together and inviting them. Come up with something that you can try to move it forward, but if they're still just not interactive, they kind of give you short answers, they don't really respond to your messages, they just don't seem interested, it's important to walk away. I know you may not want to. I mean, it might not be the first option you want to take, but you have to ask yourself, are you are you just digging yourself into a deeper trench? You know, it's important sometimes to recognize, hey, this person just isn't interested in me. They aren't interested in talking. I have to be okay with them be able to move on. Um, Rage Master says, fear of missing out, you should make a video about FOMO. Yeah, definitely. I have a video about FOMO planned in the future because uh, a few people have asked me about that, guys. And look, I was someone who suffered greatly from FOMO. I used to. I think over the t over time, I've kind of gotten better with that, um, with recognizing, hey, um, I have a limited amount of time in my day and I need to really prioritize the things I truly care about. Um, and yeah, yeah. And, and just on that FOMO point, one thing I kind of realized is that what tends to happen a lot is that people will um, hold on to something and then when it passes, they don't even think twice about it, right? Like, oh, I didn't go to that event with my friends. Oh, they had a good time. Eh, okay. Once it passes, then it's like you kind of focus on other things. So a lot of times FOMO happens prior to, to doing something, prior to taking action. So it's important to really take action. Um, Stuart says, I've got Jomo, the joy of missing out. <laughs> Stuart don't want to do nothing. <laughs> he just wants, that's it. No, you invite Stuart, not going. <laughs> uh, anyway, let's jump into point number two here, guys. We're talking about five signs your crush is wasting your time. Don't make these mistakes, guys. Number two is this. They're currently dating someone else. Now, I won't spend too long on this because I've talked about this tons and tons of times before, but I think it's important to include in this list because a lot of times... When you have a crush on someone that's dating someone else, you still want to go out with them. You still want to date them. You still hope there's a chance. And it's hard to kind of tell yourself, hey, look, right now just ain't a good time. Right now I need to kind of just move past that, move on to someone else, talk to someone else, not prioritize and think too deeply about that person. And it's hard for us to do that because... Um, there's always this idea that, hey, maybe they're going to break up. Maybe um, maybe they'll like me more instead of their boyfriend. But I really think it's important for you to recognize that if you're chasing someone that's currently in a relationship, you are wasting your time. Your time would be much better spent talking to other people, pursuing other crushes, practicing, right? Practicing flirting, practicing dating, practicing asking them out. Build those skills so that, so that if that person does break up in the future, you'll have all that time you'll have prepared, you'll have practiced, you'll have gained knowledge. But if you're kind of just saying, oh, I don't really want to date anyone, I only want to date that person who's currently in a relationship, well, then you're most likely just going to kind of sit on the sidelines and wait and wait and wait and hope. Sometimes you may, even, you may even feel jealous at the fact that you see them walking together, you see them kissing or hanging out. Uh, you might want to be in that role, but you know, like what you've done is you've stepped out of your own life and you stepped into this potential life that you want to exist, but that doesn't exist. And it's way, way better for you to kind of recognize, hey, this is my current situation. I'm single. They're in a relationship. They're someone I can't date right now. So let's jump in. Uh, but first, I want to say, Raymond, thank you so much for the dollar super chat, Raymond. I really appreciate it, man. Always a pleasure. Happy to have you part of the OG community, man, and just part of our community in, in general. So happy to have you on board, man. Really appreciate it. Um, so I want to jump into another chat poll here, guys. I want to hear what you guys have to say. 
Um, and this will be a simple yes or no, right, for everyone in here. The person that you currently like, are they in a relationship right now with someone else? Yes or no? I want every single person, every single person watching right now to jump in. Raymond, thank you so much for the dollar super chat. Really appreciate it, man. Um, so guys, like I said, um, is your crush currently in a relationship with someone else? Yes or no? Jump into the chat. Every single person watching right now, just give a simple yes or no answer. I want to hear what you guys have to say. These live streams are all about feedback and interaction. So the more you interact, the more I know where to kind of take these conversations. Um, so let's see what some of you guys had to say. Rubik said, yes. Rage Master, no. Coda, yes. Landon said, Landon Nulty Music says, no. Rubik says, I'm dumb. Why are you dumb, Rubik? Uh, oh, boy. Uh, Azure to your, your quiz says, yes. Um, Nigel says, no, Nash, the real deal says, yes. Six Hansen says, no, just got out of one. Trinity says, no, but they were, uh, Stewart says, don't have a crush. Uh, Jill says she's, is an inter uh, she isn't interested. Cheesy says, not that I know of. Uh, Felicia says, no, uh, Haley says, no, uh, Ak Akshad Sadkar says, yes. Um, S Scott says, what's that noise in the back? And I keep hearing. So every time someone donates, um, a super chat, uh, a, a fire sound, I gotta add fire emoji come up too, a fire like thing come on the screen, but a fire sound pops up because it's a burning question. So anytime you submit a burning question, that fire noise will pop up. Um, but I gotta add an animation with it too. Oh man, one thing I love is when I ask a chat poll question and then the chat moves too quickly for me to keep up, so I try to read it really quickly. So that's always fun for me. So let me see my, <laughs> Donna says, I don't currently have a crush. Coda says, yes. Sam says, no, but most of my crushes have been. Uh, Alexander says, I don't know, but I, uh, I know she likes me. Hamish says, no. Sig says, no. Uh, Lastborn says, say again. Uh, Kevin says, yo, what's good? What's good, Kevin? Uh, Amani says, I don't know. Uh, Des, uh, Devzio says she broke up a few months ago. Ashes says no, and thank God. So, <clears throat> so it sounds like it's it's a mix, right? It sounds like you guys are uh, pretty mixed in in the chat here. Some people says yes, yes. Some people said they uh, their crushes are. Some people said their crushes aren't. Um, so for the ones that are your crushes are in a relationship, like I said. If you feel like you're kind of waiting for that person to break up with that, you know, their, their current boyfriend or girlfriend, if you're kind of just sitting on the sidelines, you're wasting your time. You're holding out for something that you can't guarantee. You don't know. Even if they break up, you don't know if they're going to want to date you. So you might hold out all this time only for them to kind of turn around and go, oh, I'm actually not interested. So what have you been doing? How have you spent that time? So, so you don't want to kind of be caught in a situation like that, that guys. That's that's an incredibly point one. For the people who said that their crushes are not currently in relationships, well, I think that changes things a lot. If your crush is not currently in a relationship, it's important, like I said, go back to the first step. What's the next thing that you can do to move the needle forward? What's the next thing you can do to start talking to them and get closer to them and actually start to build something with them? That's where you want to kind of start thinking about things, guys. Um because that's going to help you actually increase your chances of getting with them. Now, some of you don't have crushes, right? Like Stuart mentioned, you don't have a crush right now, which is okay. I think it's still important to kind of recognize what are some of the things that maybe, um, you know, you don't want to fall prey to, you don't want to fall into those mindsets of. And it's easy because here's the thing, guys. If you're single right now and you don't, you're not crushing on anyone, it's easy to sit back in the sidelines and go, oh, yeah. Ooh, sorry. It's easy to sit back and go, oh, yeah, that, that's not going to happen to me. Oh, no, I would never do that. And then what happens is you start to like someone and your mind changes, your thoughts change, your feelings change. You start to get confused about little interactions. You start to question messages you send. You know, like everyone's got a plan until they get hit. You know, that whole Mike Tyson quote. Uh, and that's kind of how it is with crushes. You know, when you're when you don't not crushing on it, when you feel like, yeah, I'm totally in control. I'm logical. I'm this and that. But when you like someone, feelings have a way of kind of pulling you in the direction they want to. Um, let's see. Azim says, Josh is sweet talking considered obvious now. Oh, so yeah, so, so that sweet talking point, basically, um, I wouldn't say that it's considered obvious. I think that, you know, like there's maybe kind of very overt flirting where if you're kind of a little over the top, then girls are going to be like, who is this guy? That's why it's like flirting should kind of, there's really two types of flirting that I've seen work. And it, I feel like it does depend on the guy or, the, or even the girl uh, and what works for you, right? So for some guys, um, they carry this level of confidence that they can walk up to a girl. Sorry, it's really hot in here. They can walk up to a girl, look them in the eyes and kind of just be like, hey, what's up? I think you're cute. Let me get your number. 
right? Some guys can do that, right? Darkest Knight, I don't think he's here now, but if he was here, he'd probably say those are the Chads, right? Some guys just can do that. They just have that star quality. Well, the rest, the rest of us, I think the rest of us guys uh, probably perform better when there's something that can help us connect with that person. So maybe that's something that's happening around you. Maybe that's a conversation topic. Um, and sometimes you may be better at flirting by being more casual, talking to someone, saying, hey, you know, you're a really interesting person. How about we go grab something to eat? And then taking it in that direction, right? Where you're not over the top, but you are kind of more smooth in how you do it. So there isn't like a... Um, one way, one size fits all that girls, oh, girls will figure this out. No, I think it really kind of depends on your personality, how you present yourself, and plus your confidence level in yourself. Uh, I'm going to jump in and answer a few more questions here before I get into the third point. Pa Palermo says, the girl I'm interested in is in a relationship. We're really close. We work together. We've been open about having feelings for each other. We know our boundaries. Yeah, look, uh, the girl you're interested in uh, is in a relationship. And if you guys are close, then look, your crushes may know that you like them, right? And they may be in a relationship. Um, but where things go from there is going to be kind of tricky, right? Palermo says, followed up by saying, her boyfriend has gone behind her back and smoked weed and has done stuff behind her back, but I made a promise not to intervene in their relationship, but I don't know what to do. Yeah, th this is a tough one, a real, real tough one. Um, This is a tough one because uh, what I would say to that is that um, it sounds to me like there are some issues in their relationship that maybe they're not on the same page about. And what a lot of people tend to do is they tend to, if they like someone and they, they see that their crush is in a relationship, they try to like exploit those issues. Um, but I don't think that's a healthy way to do it because um, the girl you like is not learning how to handle bad environments and situations. And that's something she has to kind of learn. So uh, on her own, if you want to have a healthy relationship with her, right? Just because you pull her out of a bad situation doesn't mean she's going to be prepared and know how to handle a bad situation. So if she's in a situation where she's not being open and honest with her boyfriend about how she feels or he's lied to her and he's betrayed her trust, well, then it's important to maybe talk to her about trust and ask her, is trust important to you? Um, you know, like, and learn more about that and then tell her, well, maybe you need to talk to your boyfriend about that and tell him exactly where you stand. Because look, if she then realizes on her own, hey, you know what? He's breaking something that's important to me, which is trust. I can't be with this guy. Well, then maybe you've set yourself up in a way to kind of talk to her more and get closer to her. But it's a tricky situation when they are in a relationship. Like I said, there's no surefire, easy answer to it. Pokemon Mystery Dungeon said, you said you wanted a burning, exploding emoji with the Super Chat membership, Josh, because I think I'm in the mood to help you with that. Yeah, Pokemon, if, if you can, that'd be really awesome. I want to have kind of like a, a fireball come out in the screen. Um, but I got to figure out how to how I can do that. I could probably just, YouTube has tons of them, but a custom one would be cool. Um, like a fireball just come across the screen every time there's a super chat. Alex Burns says, Josh, I can't do that. I'm way more sensitive. I want to see girls. Uh, I want to see girls see that way. So if you're someone that is very, very sensitive um, and... Uh, look, being sensitive doesn't mean that you can't also be confident, right? You can be a very sensitive person and very in tune with your feelings um, and very kind of, uh, di you know, not disconnected, very connected with um, your emotions and, and, you know, everything that kind of spurs for you, but you can still be confident too. And the way to kind of carry that sensitivity and confidence at the same time, I think, is to um, be open to speaking your truth when you truly feel it. Because if you're a sensitive person and there are deep feelings you have, what tends to happen is sometimes people get scared, people get nervous, people are afraid that like, oh, if I share what I'm thinking, if I share how I feel, then this person is going to be weirded out, this person's not going to like me. But I think that the more you get into the habit of sharing your truth, speaking your mind, being honest and open, um, the more solid you're going to feel in doing that, right? You're not going to be as scared because you'll have practiced it time and time again. Um, reading through some of the chat here. I think we put the fire out. Thank you guys. Yeah, yeah I saw, <laughs> I saw the fire saying a bunch of weird things. Um, okay. I want to jump into point number three here, guys. And that's this. This is a big one, a real, real big one. Um, one of the signs that your crush is wasting your time guys is that you're obsessed with them. Now, this is not even like your crush flat out wasting your time. This is you becoming so obsessed with one person that your time is just simply wasted only thinking, sorry, only thinking about them, only worrying about them, only kind of focusing on them. 
So many people develop what's called one-itis. And one-itis is like you prioritize this one girl or you prioritize this one guy over everyone else and they're the only person you think about. You wake up in the morning and they pop into your mind. You stalk their social media feed all the time because you just want to see anything that they post. If you're obsessed with your crush and you feel like they're the only thing on your mind to the point even where they may be, it, may, you, it may be interfering with other things, right? So let's say you have a crush that's in one of your classes and you can't focus in class because you're just staring at that crush all the time. Um, yeah, that crush is wasting your time. That crush is preventing you from doing other things. You know, I, I know lots of people that um, will do things like they'll change classes or change schools or hang out in certain areas and do things just so they can kind of be around their crush. Not even so that they can directly talk to them, but just so they can be in the same environment. And I think that when you have that level of one-itis, you're setting yourself up for failure. You're wasting your own time because your decisions, your actions, your thoughts are not centered around what's going to be best for you. They're centered around what's going to put you in the proximity of your crush. You know, and I think that if you fall into this, you fall into this mess, it's just a hard, hard place to get out of. You know, like a lot of times guys who are in the friend zone tend to develop one-itis for their crush. They feel like, oh my God, but this person is perfect. They're so amazing. They're so awesome. Granted, you probably never talk to them on such a deep degree that you can know those things, but you just feel it, right? Sometimes you feel it just because they're attractive, right? So if you want to kind of get over that sense of one-itis here, you need to recognize that, you know, you may be obsessed with your crush, you may have those deep feelings, but there are other people that you can talk to, right? Like this crush, I know you like them and I know they're like the number one person on your mind, but your life shouldn't center around them. And the way that you kind of start to shift that is to start to do things and make decisions, like actually make decisions that don't involve your crush being a factor. So that might mean, hey, you know what? My crush is in this art class and it'd be cool to take art class with them, but I don't care about art. I'm not going to take art just because this person's in it. You know, start making decisions that don't revolve around that person. Now, I'm going to jump in. We're going to get the chat poll going here, guys, because I really want to know what you guys have to say. I want every single person in the chat to jump in. We have 63 people watching. I want 63, potentially, if we can get it, 63 people giving an answer here. Do you have one-itis for your crush? Or, or if you don't have a crush right now, have you ever had one-itis for a crush of yours. I wanna hear what you guys have to say. I think it'd be super interesting. I know I had one itis for my crush in high school. Uh, it was a girl that I really, really liked. And, um, you know, hey, you know, um, I, I just saw it as like, oh, you know, she's perfect. She's amazing. I can talk to her. We're best friends. Uh, but I was too scared to kind of tell her how I felt. And when I did tell her how I felt by writing her a letter, confessing my feelings, she gave me, she, you know, put me in the friend zone. Uh, Red Lightning says, just let everyone know I'm disappearing from the channel for a while. I'm not welcomed here by Josh, so I'm leaving for a while. Probably not coming back at all, so everyone goodbye forever. Arby, there's no reason to leave, man. I know that in the last few weeks or so, there's been a lot of hiccups and a lot of challenges, man. But like I said, dude, uh, nobody's perfect, man. We all make mistakes. And the most important thing about making a mistake is acknowledging it, learning from it, and growing. And trying our very, very best to not fall into the same habit of making those mistakes. Because when you continuously make the same mistakes and you hurt people, they start to lose trust in you. But Arby, you're a valued member of the community, man. You always have been, right? So um, we want you to be active, man. We want you to be a part of it. Um, you know, and that's that's kind of the most important thing. I asked you guys, have you ever had one itis for your crush? Here's what you had to say. Rubik said no. Felicia said no. K Sig Hansen said kind of, kind of not. Anthony says I have before. Tristan says I have before. Rage Master said yeah, pretty much. Noah says yeah. Uh, Raymond says yes, and I'll admit to it. Dono says yes, I've had it before. Nash says no. Myth Myth Master says yeah. Palermo says yeah. Hamish says yes, 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 yes. Haley says oh yeah, one hundred percent. Uh, Jalen says, yes, yes, I'm, it's true, I do. Uh, Cheesy says, I wouldn't say I'm obsessed, but I want to be, I want to be, I want a similar situation to my idol, Eric Clapton with Patty Boyd. I don't know why, but I want to be more obsessed with her. Is that, is it wrong? That's interesting. I'm not, I'm going to have to kind of look into their relationship. I don't know much about that, but uh, Cheesy, can you kind of break it down a little bit more and explain kind of what you think they have? Um, Alexander Cole says, ashes and roses, uh, 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 my crush likes me, but she, I like the same things. Okay. 
Sam says, I always get one-itis and it's the worst. It happens almost every time I have a crush and it clouds my judgment and ability to see things as they are. Yeah, and I think that's the key piece here. When you have one-itis for someone where they're like the only thing on your mind, it really does cloud your judgment. You really start to feel like, um, you know, like it's hard to focus on other things because you're just constantly thinking about this person. Uh, Stuart says, never have I have a, I have, Never, I have to rational a mind to get caught with one, up one person. Okay, and reading through. Uh, Champion Game says, no, I never had that many crushes in school. Azim says, Josh, people say you shouldn't settle for less than you desire. So is it fair for average guys like me to pursue super hot girls, uh, knowing even girls wish for Chad looking guys? Yeah, Azim, that's an interesting point. I think that um, if you feel, and, and I think we talked about this before. If you feel like, well, these super hot girls are only going to date these Chad guys, you've already lost. You've already kind of thrown in the towel for yourself. I think that, like we all prefer, we all prefer to be with people we find to be super attractive, right? Like we all want to be with someone that we find attractive, but that doesn't mean that attractiveness, and I know uh, a lot of the black pill community would disagree with me on this, but all the research that shows and, and talks about what healthy relationships look like, what people, long-term relationships look like, what happy relationships look like, it's more than just attraction. It is deep connection, it is shared values, it is humor, it is having a path and purpose. Like all these factors play into making a happy and healthy relationship. And if a guy is Chad and he's only running on his look, but he's missing all these other qualities, he's probably not gonna be in a relationship very long with those girls because there's gonna be a longing. Those relationships relationships tend to be a high spark and then fizzle right out. Um, let me see, grab a few more answers here. Um, Dawn Neff says, yes, I'm obsessed with my crush. I miss her so much. I hear you on that. I hear you on that. Yeah, guys. And like I said, um, I've done videos in the past about one itis and how to get over it, but I, so I highly recommend checking out those one itis videos. But Ultimately, like I said, if you have one itis for your crush, you're going to be wasting your time here because you're becoming super obsessed with them and they're, you're prioritizing them in your life and you're not putting yourself first. And putting yourself first sometimes means not pursuing a crush. Sometimes it means not making decisions based on them. So I'm going to jump into point number four here. But before I do that, I want to say this, guys. Um, if you are looking for an opportunity to make friends, to talk to other people, I know a lot of you guys are kind of sharing some of your personal stories and experiences here in the chat, which is awesome. And the chat here is made up of a lot of people that are also part of our Discord server. So if you want to join our Josh Speaks community, check out the link for the Discord server, guys. It is an awesome, awesome place to make friends, to get advice, to kind of share what's on your mind. We have a lot of fun and interesting boards in there. Um, yes, I know I'm using Discord uh, white here. I bring it up every time because people get mad at me for not using the the nighttime night night mode on Discord or whatever. But um, yes, the Discord is a great place, guys. I'd love to have you part of the community. We passed 600 members not too long ago. We're growing and growing, so it's just awesome. All you have to do is go to the joshspeaks.com/discord, guys. It'd be an awesome place to, for you guys to be. Uh, Champion says, "Isn't one itis uh, simping?" So yeah, I guess I guess one itis would be more the classical terms, right? Before simping was a thing, uh, one itis was a thing. But I have a video coming out on Tuesday where I'm going to talk about whether complimenting someone makes you a simp. Uh, and I'm going to kind of break down this idea of using simp as an insult and how it's kind of used in our society and I think overused and how simp is kind of the new word to replace all these other terms that we've gotten so used to using and the reason why we've gotten used to using. I'm going to dive into that simpness uh, on Tuesday, guys, so stay tuned for that. But like I said, check out the Discord, guys. Um, also, right after this live stream, guys, I'm going to be jumping over on Instagram for what I call the Instagram after party. So if you're not following me over on Instagram, you're missing out, guys. Uh, it's an exclusive live stream that I always do over on Instagram. Let me just pull it up. My profile. Here. Follow me over on Instagram. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm on the road to 5,000 subscribers. Oh, it's missing here. Hold on. Yeah. There we go. I'm on the road to 5,000 followers on, on Instagram there. So definitely follow me over there, guys. Right after this live stream, I'm going to jump live over there. And what I love to do is bring you guys on to chat with me. So, so if you want a video chat with me kind of openly and publicly, Instagram is the best way to do it. If you want to have a private video chat, Patreon is the best way to do it. Um, but yeah, the Instagram after party is where all the cool kids are. I'd love to have you guys over there. Another thing I want to bring up here is this, guys. Um, a lot of the things I talk about in my videos, I also talk about in my book. Some of you know I have it, some of you don't know, but um, 
my book, Embracing the Awkward, I wrote it for you guys. I wrote it kind of with a lot of my personal stories and experiences in mind, things I've gone through, and then with a lot of practical advice for teenagers, college students, people kind of in this growth stage of their life where they're trying to figure out their path and their purpose. Um, I think it'll be a super, super helpful guide for you to, worth checking out. It's available on Amazon. Um, I also saw that it's also available like on, on eBay. I was like, oh, let me see if it's on eBay. It's also available on eBay. So if you want to get on eBay cheaper, I think, um, but it's on Amazon guys, definitely check it out. I think it's a super, super helpful resource for you. Okay. And like I said, um, oh, this is kind of, this pulls up, um, latest subscribers and donations. If you haven't already hit the thumbs up on this video, guys, let's, let's, let's get those thumbs up on this video. We're at 50. No, no, that was the chat rate. We're at 50 likes. Let's get this to 60 likes if we can. Let's see if we can get to 60 likes guys. Okay. Let's jump into point number four here. And that is going to be this guys. We're talking about five signs. Your crush is wasting your time. And this is the fourth one. They're stringing you along for attention. Now, this does tie deeply into what we were talking before about um, your crush being in a relationship, your crush not really talking to you. When I say your crush is stringing you along for attention, a lot of times this is your crush gives you little crumbs. Maybe they'll talk to you and chat with you once in a while. Maybe they'll text you. Maybe they'll smile at you when you're in class. These little signs that we get give us hope and make us feel like, whoa, like maybe they do like me, you know? You can go a few weeks without talking to your crush. You can go a few weeks without talking to them. Um, and then they just reach out to you out of nowhere. And then all of a sudden it's like, oh wow, you know, like maybe they actually do like me, but you'll ignore the weeks of not talking. So these little kind of moments of attention is what we focus on rather than focusing on what we're not building with them, right? So like I said, if they're stringing you along for attention, a lot of times they may look like, they ask you to do things for them, right? They ask for little favors here and there. They reach out to you when they need something or they want to talk, but they're not really the best listeners. They don't really take time to hear what's going on in your life. Um, they kind of like evade hanging out with you. They come up with excuses every so often. They just are really bad texters. They never respond to your messages when you try to talk to them. This is stringing them along, guys. Hey, Darkest Night, good to see you, man. We've been talking a lot about certain things you, uh, I think, would have opinions on. Uh, saying just be Chad really isn't saying anything. It's just saying just be Chad. It's like, but you, see, the thing is, it's saying just be Chad. It's like, it's not even advice. It's like saying just be tall. It's like, you can't just be tall. So why would you, if you can't change your height, why would you try to prioritize something you can't do? So I think it's better to focus on things you can do. Um, yeah, so um, like I was saying, if if your crush is stringing you along and you feel like like the, the connection you have with them isn't mutual, that it's more you doing things for them, you're the one always reaching out, you're the one always texting them, and they never take time to kind of reciprocate or give you that attention back, you're being strung along. And usually what that leads to is you getting friend zoned or them just kind of enjoying that attention uh, with no intention of actually kind of building a relationship with you. Um, so I, I really, really think guys that if you feel like, if you feel like you can't break free of that kind of rope that they've thrown out to you where they're stringing you along and you can't break free of it, sometimes the best thing to do is to just cut that person cold to tell yourself, you know what? Any interaction I have with them, I don't feel strong enough yet to kind of say no or to set boundaries. So sometimes the best thing is to just kind of let them go is to kind of just let them you know, like do their own thing there uh, and then just stop engaging so much. Um, Darkest Knight said, that's the point I can't be Chad. Um, so yeah, I think Darkest Knight, I think that no one can choose to be Chad. So it's like saying, like I said, it's like saying, you, I can't I can't choose to be tall. Yes, of course, we can't, we're, our height is kind of our height. We have no control over that. So where we should focus our time and attention is on the things we can control. I feel like in the black belt community and even you darkest night, you tend to prioritize things you can't control. You focus all your time and attention on things you can't control. And the moment you kind of give up that control in your own life of what your priorities are, what your focus is, you're choosing to lose. You're choosing to not um, succeed where you can. So I think that's a, it's, you know, there's more to it than that, obviously, but 
I think that's kind of the crux. I feel like the black pill community tends, they, they show a lot, they give a lot of studies and research and data, which kind of shows pretty obvious things. Attractive people succeed, tall people do well, good looking people get more things. Yes, these are pretty obvious things and the data does support it. But if there's nothing you can do about it, why are we spending so much time and energy focusing on it? Uh, that's just my question. That's my, my idea there. Uh, Davidio says, should we raise more awareness for those being crushed on, uh, on how they should approach uh, react instead of dangerous cliches and such? Um, I'm not sure I understand. Let me reread that. Uh, should we raise more awareness for those being crushed on, uh, how they should be appro appropriately react instead of dangerous cliches and such? I'm not sure I fully understand the question. Can you rephrase it, uh, Davidio? Uh, let's see. Alex says, what if she's, what if she's worth it? And you have, you have to stay determined and not give up on her. Grant Cardone met his wife, Elena, and she was ignoring him for 13 months. Now they're happy in marriage and have two kids. Yeah, that's a really, Alex, I think you make a really, really good point there. I'm not advocating for giving up at the first sign, the first sign of difficulty, give up. I'm not advocating for that at all. However, what I am saying is that if you have to ask yourself, what is it that you truly want? And how are you building that with the person, right? So if a, if a, like, I'm assuming for Grant Cardone's wife, Elena, she probably talked to him and interacted with him, probably just wasn't interested in dating him. So I doubt that Grant Cardone only focused and prioritized this woman in his life. He probably went out and sold a bunch of houses and did real estate and built up his wealth and built up his confidence and built up his self-esteem. And then every so often reached out to her to try to make it work. I think that's okay, right? Like there's different approaches to things. This is, it's a very nuanced thing, but what you have to remember is that if you're being strung along, that's very different from you asking someone out and they're not really interested right now. Asking someone out and they're not really interested right now. It's far better to make sure that the decisions that you make are ones that you feel confident and happy about rather than you're doing it because you don't want to lose, right? If you're coming from a place of fear of losing, they may not talk to me anymore. They may not like me anymore. You're already starting from a, from a place where you don't feel confident in yourself. I'm reading through here. Uh, Star Wars nurse says, I'm tall. I'm like five seconds, five seconds, five, seven. I'm eye looking. I'm in between. I hear you on that. Look, just because you're tall doesn't mean that you're going to be super confident. Doesn't mean that you're going to be super good looking or any of those things, right? Height is not something you really have control over. I guess maybe you can wear like platform shoes and stuff, but um, you know, we're all gifted and, and not gifted in with different heights. And that's something we just have to be aware of. But all right, let's jump into point number five here, guys. And that's gonna be this. By the way, like I said, if you haven't already hit the thumbs up, we're at 61 likes, we did it, guys. Let's see if we can get to 70 likes now. 70 likes um, as we roll into point number five here. For those of you that haven't liked the stream, hit the like button, hit the like button, guys. And like I said, if you have a burning question, something that's on your mind that you wanna ask me, you want my attention, you want me to answer it right now, the super chat function is right there. Donate a dollar, two dollars, five dollars, whatever it is, I will stop what I'm doing and I will answer your question directly. So. That's always an option there available for you guys. Let's get into point number five here. And that's gonna be this. Um, we're talking about five signs your crush is wasting your time. And these are mistakes you don't wanna make. Now, this is something that I forgot who, I forgot who mentioned it before, I wish I remember, but you mentioned it before. You know they're not a good match for you. Guys, there are lots of people that you may like that at the end of the day, you just know they're not a good fit for you, right? Like I've met girls over the years that I thought were cool and I was attracted to, but deep down I knew, hey, you know what? Even though I'm attracted to them, I'm not gonna try to pursue a relationship with them because I just know it's not gonna, it's not gonna fill the, what I'm looking for in a partnership, right? So I think that's incredibly important for you guys to think deeply about. If you know that they're not a good match for you, then it's important to recognize that they're may, they may not be worth pursuing. Now look, when you like someone and you wanna be with them, sometimes you throw all that out the window. They may have bad habits and bad traits that you are willing to overlook just because you like them. And that's where I think it becomes a problem. Because if, let's say you you tell yourself, hey, I don't wanna date someone who is um, a, a smoker, or they smoke weed, or they drink alcohol, or they're, I don't know, part of a gang activity or something. <laughs> they're doing stuff that you just don't feel comfortable with. Even though you're attracted to them, they may just not be worth pursuing. Darkest Knight said, why do I keep getting banned? I just said be Chad. Why are people so butthurt that I'm staying reality? 
Um, someone asked here, what do you mean by burning question? Yeah, Don, that's a good question. So when I say burning question, what I basically mean is I, I call super chats burning questions because when I get a super chat notification, basically what it does is it puts it, it, it the person's name will pop up here at the top and um, you'll hear like a fire sound pop up and you know, it'll show up in the chat, a little super chat. And then what I'll really do is just um, stop what I'm talking about and I will answer that person's question. I consider it a burning question because it's like it's in need of being put out. It's a fire that needs to be answered right now. So that's how I kind of treat super chats, like burning questions. But like I was saying, guys, if if you know that person's not good for you, they may not just name not may may just not be worth pursuing. So I want to do a chat poll here and ask you guys this. Um, and I'm curious to hear what you guys have to say. Do you feel like you and your crush have similar values in life? Or do you feel like you guys come from two different worlds, you value very different things, and you're just not you're not com uh, compatible in that sense, right? So let me explain maybe what I mean by different values there. So maybe to you, you care very deeply about having deep conversations, about really connecting with someone, about... Um, you know, being kind to each other, but maybe the person you like is very vain and is very petty and is very jealous and catty. And yeah, they're really hot, but they have all these qualities that you just don't connect with. Where do you stand with your crush, guys? Do you guys have similar values or not? I'm curious to hear what you guys have to say. I'm sweating so much here. Uh, by the way, guys, I ordered a, a, an air conditioner thing unit for the wall, uh, the window. So by next Tuesday, new, next Tuesday, I should have it. Um, and then hopefully by the next stream, I should, um, it should be in the window and I won't be sweating like crazy. <laughs> if you watch Tuesday's video, man, I was sweating so much because I have to close my door, I have to close my window, I have to put the light on, and it's, there's no air circulation, so I literally am just in a heat box melting while I record the videos, so it's fun. Red Lightning says, some people want me to leave. Arby, I think ultimately the decision rests with you, man. You have to decide what makes sense to you. If you want to be a part of this community and you want to be someone that people respect and care about, then it is important to display that, to, to show people that that's who you are, right? I think in the case of being accepted and trusted by other people, it, and if that's something you value, then it's important to kind of figure out, hey, how can I show people that? Um, but the decision ultimately comes down to you, man. It comes down to what you, what you really want to do. Uh, Trinity the monkey says, Hey Josh, my crush used to have a boyfriend. They broke up like a half a year ago. She used to like me before she went out with this dude and now I'm ready for a relationship. Should I ask her out? Yep. Yeah, so this is a really good question. If sorry, the mic, your crush used to have a boyfriend and she, she liked you before him. Yeah. I think you should totally ask her out. I think that now is the perfect time to pursue her because You've already built that connection with her. And now that she's single again, there's no reason why you shouldn't just ask her out and try to make something happen there. Haley says, all right, so I asked you guys, do you guys share similar values to your crush? Here's what you had to say. Uh, Nash The Real Deal says, yes. Uh, Haley says, we have a good contrast of similarities and differences, but the things that really matter, we agree on. That's awesome, Haley. That's really cool to hear. Um, Felicia says, yes, yes, but also no. I hear you on that too. <laughs> Alexander Cole says, yes. Judah says, I'm not sure. Dawn Neff says, I uh, like, I think me and my crush are compatible, but how should I tell? That's a good question, Dawn. Uh, I did a video last week, uh, I think it was last live stream, I think, maybe talking about kind of figuring out compatibility with your crush, but Dawn, that's a really good point. I'll, make, I'll definitely make a video on how to know whether or not you're compatible with your crush. What are the things you should definitely look for and even ask them to find out? Um, but that's a really good question, Don. Uh, let's see. Giselle Vega says no. Uh, uh, jumped. Let's see. Alexander Cole says yes. Judah says I'm not sure. Oh, I was reading that already. Um, Jalen says I think we're kind of the same. Cruz says what's up, Josh? I'm a subscriber. Love your videos. Good to have you, Cruz. Happy you're part of the live stream. Uh, Jack Ruda, Je Judah, Judah Ronda says I feel like we have some things in common, but not a lot. I hear you on that. Alex Burns says Josh, my friend likes. Uh, my friend likes looks like. My friend likes looks I girl I like girls who they are not hold on Josh my friend likes looks I like girls who they are it's not by looks it's more like a sensitive way I'm not sure I fully understand that sentence um Galactic Boomfly says hey Josh how to meet girls with online school that's a really really good point Galactic Given everything going on in the world, I mean how do you still date how do you pursue people through online school I have a video coming up on that really, really soon. So stay tuned for that one. Um, let's see. Ashes and Roses says, me and my crush want to be together and we are going in the same direction in life. That's awesome. That's really cool to hear. 
Let's see. Dev Devzio says, She gave me so much hope uh, and led me to believe we were going to be in a relationship, but we slowly started drifting apart, and I feel like I didn't get any closure from that. Should I confront her? Hmm. Let me reread that again. She gave you so much hope and led you to believe that you were going to be in a relationship, but you slowly started drifting apart, and you feel like you didn't get any closure. Um, D Devzio, this is an incredibly common thing to happen, right? You're pursuing someone, you think it's leading to something, and then it just kind of fizzles out, and you don't really know how it happened, why it happened, or where to go from there. I think in terms of getting closure, it's a, it's a hard question to answer because it really all depends on what you feel is going to help you move forward, right? So for some people, closure might be to say, hey, you know what? I don't know why it didn't work, but clearly she didn't like me. I'm just, I'm just going to move forward. I'm just going to close that chapter in my life and move forward. And to some people, that is closure. To, to them, that's a way of kind of not thinking about it and going forward. But then for other people, they feel like they're always going to be wondering, what could I have done differently? What did I do wrong? How can I change things? And sometimes it is important for them to talk to that crush, to ask him, hey, whatever happened between us? Like, why didn't that work out? Because sometimes getting that clarity and information from your crush helps you do better the next time around you want to pursue someone. So I think you need to think what method works best for you in terms of getting real closure. Uh, Haley says, Josh about to have a damn stroke reading that comment. <laughs> yeah, I was kind of confused by uh, by the way it was written. Um, all right, I'm going to answer one or two more questions. I'm going to do kind of the holistic wrap up here to kind of explaining the points. Like I said, if you haven't already hit the thumbs up button, guys, we're at 67. Let's get to 70. Anyone who hasn't hit the like button, hit that like button. Let's get to 70. All right. Coda says, I asked mine out. Me and her were uh, so alike. We loved each other and she cheated on me. Oh, wow. So you asked her out and you guys were so alike, but yet she cheated. And, you know, Coda, that's a really hard thing to go through. I'm really sorry that happened to you, man. Um, you can hear the bell. Yeah, the church bells ring at six o'clock here. So they have their own bells. But, um, <laughs> so yeah, so going back to your point though, if she cheated on you, even though you guys have things in common, that just goes to show that just because you're compatible with someone doesn't mean that, that they are able to maintain a relationship. This is something we need to be like, realize guys that, you know, there are so many factors that play into whether or not a relationship will work, right? Some people believe that it's just looks and looks are the only thing that matters, but it's really not true. There's so many other factors, so many other things that kind of really can help um, build a relationship up and help build a partnership up, right? And sometimes when people choose to cheat, there's a multitude of reasons there. Maybe they don't feel like they're being valued by their partner. Maybe they're bored of the relationship. Maybe they just want to experience a multi, you know, like multiple relationships and they just haven't conveyed that to their partner. It's hard to say why someone cheats. There's no definitive answer, but I think what you can learn from that experience is to simply recognize, Hey, you know what? If in my next relationship, I want to be upfront and open and I want to create an environment where my partner can do the same thing, where they know that they can be honest with me along the way that can help prevent cheating because that person may be honest and say, Hey, I'm not really into the relationship anymore. You guys may break up and you go forward preventing the cheating. Um, Pokemon says Pokemon mystery dungeon says I lost track of where you are in the live stream. On the other hand, it's been an hour. Yeah, we're, we're getting to the hour mark here. I'm going to answer one, one more question. Um, and then I'm going to jump into the wrap up here, guys. But like I said, after this live stream, jump on Instagram. So definitely follow me over there. Okay, let's see. Myth Master says, I met a girl, got her number, and we've been texting and stuff, but she's kind of making like remarks about other dudes or something or trying to make me jealous. Is she just testing me? So you met this girl and she's talking about other dudes and stuff. I think it is a test. I think that if she's talking about other dudes, it could be a sign of one, maybe she views you as a friend. Maybe you didn't kind of build up enough romantic attraction to where she feels like if I talk about other guys, he's going to walk away. So it's possible that she might view you as a friend. And the best way to kind of step out of that and see is to ask her out directly, ask her to hang out and then flirt, make a move, do your thing. Um, but another piece is she might be saying it to kind of show you, hey, listen, I got options. There are people that like me. People want to date me. So what that, what that should kind of push you to do is to realize, hey, you know what? If I like this girl, I need to make a move. I can't sit back and wait because if I wait, other guys are going to step up and, and ask her out and then I'm going to lose my chance. So ultimately what the the path leading forward comes to is you need to step up you need to ask her out you need to try to really pursue her because if you just stay in the texting and flirting game you're going to miss that opportunity all right guys i'm going to do a quick wrap up here um and and walk through these five points again for anyone that's jumping in late or anyone that hasn't um kind of you know missed missed some of it guys let's walk through these points once again 
We're talking about five signs your crush is wasting your time. That means that you're you're not making the best use of your time. You know, you're you're allowing one single crush to dictate how you move forward, how you operate, what you think about, and what you do. And the first sign that your crush is wasting your time is that they barely acknowledge your existence. You know, like when you message them, when you try to talk to them, they don't really talk to you. They're not really that interested. They don't really give you any time a day. So you might be wasting your time because you might be pursuing someone that just isn't into you at this moment. They may really not want to do anything. They may want, may not want a relationship with you. They may not want to talk to you or flirt with you. So it's so, so important to kind of recognize, hey, is this person interested in this as much as I am? And if they're not, you need to say, you know what, I need to keep my options open and be okay with pursuing other people and not just only focusing on one person. So many people prioritize just one person and then they lose out on other opportunities. So if they're barely acknowledging your existence, think about other people that are there as well. Number two, guys, they're currently dating someone else. Sometimes you like someone, but they're in a relationship right now. So you can't really date them. And that's a sucky situation, but what tends to happen is that sometimes when your crush is dating someone else, you decide to play the waiting game. I'm just going to sit around and hopefully they're going to break up. I'm not going to talk to anyone else, uh, anyone else. I'm not going to ask anyone else out. I'm not going to try to date anyone else because I'm just waiting for this, this thing to end so I can step in. And I think if you're taking that approach, you're really wasting your time. You should be pursuing other people. You should be seeing who you're compatible with, who you like, who you want to get to know. If you're only focusing on just one person and they're in a relationship, then what are you sitting around? doing because if they break up with that boyfriend or girlfriend there's no guarantee that they're going to want to date you so you might have just wasted all that time so try to really really prevent that from happening point number three is this guys you're obsessed with them and you have one itis look so many people get very very obsessed with their crush they think that their crush is perfect they're amazing there's no one else in the world like them but a lot of times we build up those feelings on just pure attraction right on nothing more than just wow they're really attractive and good looking. So if you don't really have that deep connection with your crush and you feel like you don't want to pursue anyone else because they're the only one that you want to pursue, they're the only one that gets you, you're setting yourself up for failure. Again, you you have one itis in that situation. You're not allowing yourself to kind of, I think, reach your potential, which is to talk to more people, to get to know them, to see what you're actually capable of. So don't allow your obsession to hold you back from doing other things, pursuing other people. If you find that, you know, you are constantly thinking about your crush to the point where you can't think about anyone else, where you can't even focus on anything else, they're always on your mind, you need to start setting up boundaries for yourself. That might mean blocking them on social media. That might mean not making decisions that involve or revolve around them. It's important to prioritize your life because your time is your time, not your crushes. Number four, guys. They're stringing you along for attention. Sometimes when you like someone, you allow them to kind of take advantage of you a little bit by, you know, asking for favors or just talking to you when they want to rather than when you kind of need to or want to reach out to them. Ultimately, your crush has full hand. They have full power in this situation and you are getting little blips of things from them and you are holding that to the highest standard. You're telling yourself, um, you're telling yourself, no, but... If I just keep trying, if I just keep, you know, maybe, just maybe they'll turn around and then maybe they'll like me or, you know, oh, the reason why they didn't message me for a month is, oh, no, they were busy and, uh, you know, I just have to kind of be patient. If you're coming up with excuses for a person's bad behavior, you're being strung along and you deserve better. You don't deserve to kind of be in a situation where... You know, you don't deserve to be in a situation where you can't, uh, you know, like you can't pursue, you know, you can't pursue other people or you can't focus on any other things just because you're hoping and waiting out for your crush. Darkest night. I wouldn't say that you're hated, man. I don't think you're hated. I don't think anyone's hated here. Um, I appreciate, I appreciate your, your, your black pill philosophy and perspective on things. Um, but yeah. Okay. Point number five is this guys, you know, they're not a good match for you. Uh, Look, a lot of times we like someone because we just have this deep physical attraction for them, but that doesn't guarantee that we can build a healthy and happy relationship with them. Relationships are about so much more than just liking someone because of how they look, right? So you need to think about your values, what matters to you, and ask yourself, hey, does this person share the same values as me? 
if I care about kindness and I care about patience, is this person in that same mindset or are they someone who is impatient, who is jealous, who is angry, who fights? Uh, do they have traits and behaviors that I don't connect with or like? Um, I think that, you know, it's, it's really, really important to think about building a relationship with your crush if they're a good match and not just allowing the wool to be pulled over your eyes just because you're super, super attracted to them. So guys, those are the five points there. When we talk about five signs your crush is wasting your time and the mistakes you don't want to make, those are the five mistakes you don't want to make, guys. And now I want you guys to know it is time for our mindful moment. This has been an interesting stream. I think we've had interesting conversations all throughout. Um, I love hearing your guys' perspectives and feedback. I love when I share a point and you guys say, hey, wait, Josh, but this point maybe runs a bit counter to what you said. What about that? And we can dive into things and discuss them. I think it's important because I'm just sharing my thoughts and my perspective and my experiences. So you guys may have different thoughts and perspectives and experiences. And that's what makes conversations great. That's what make this a, makes this a healthy and happy environment. But we are here for a mindful moment, guys. And what we like, what I like to do in this mindful moment is I want us to each take 10 seconds here. I have my mindful be- my, my bell here. We're going to take 10 seconds and uh, I want us to close our eyes and think deeply about the things we talked about in this stream. I think one uh, running theme uh, that I kind of mentioned across all the different points is to value yourself, to not allow your crush to take advantage of you just because you like them, to not let your feelings of lust make decisions for you, to value yourself, to know that you're someone that's worth caring about, what you have to say is important, what you have to share is important. So just because your crush is your crush doesn't mean you have to change all that for them. So I want you guys to think about the value you bring how important you are to this world. Guys, I, I wanna say this, I'm sorry I'm going on a bit of a tangent, but there's no one else in this world exactly like you. You're the only version of you that will ever exist. And I think that makes you pretty special. And I think that's something worth celebrating. So I want us to take 10 seconds now to the sound of the bell to think about how unique and special you are, to know the value that you bring to the table. 10 seconds, guys, let's close our eyes and do that. Thank you guys so much for being a part of this live stream. I really value everything you guys have to say and the thoughts you share. And I hope that um, this has been helpful and informative in some kind of way. What I want you to do now, if you're checking out the replays, check out the videos over there on the side. If you're watching this live, head on over to Instagram, follow me at the Josh Speaks to join the Instagram after party. Those resources over there are gonna dive deeper into this topic and be more helpful for you in this journey of not getting strung along and really developing the confidence you need to get closer to your crush. Thank you guys again for being a part of this live stream. I had a really, really good time and I will see you guys over on Instagram. As always, love and peace. See you guys there.